I think we're going to start uh, from this because a lot of the code we need is already in this example. And so uh, here, and, uh, I'm going to do it live, but I do have some notes uh, that, I, that I worked on. So, you know, basically I have all these functions, uh, and they kind of starting at the top, they at the bottom, they, they call all the ones above it, right? So like compute the minimum and maximum tangential stress, call, you know, take in a stress tensor and a Poisson ratio and a value theta, which is the distance around the wellbore, and the differential pressure, and they compute the wellbore stress, and then, so they're actually calling compute wellbore stress. They're calling compute wellbore stress, which computes the individual components of the wellbore, um, it takes in a stress tensor. Uh, the stress tensor compute SB, that's the, the wellbore stress tensor, so that, that, that performs the rotation. It takes in uh, the angles between the local and the geographic coordinate system and the angles of the deviation of the wellbore. Okay. So all of those were there. We, we used this before, and we'll just start from there. So what we'll do um, is we're going to create a new function. Um, so we're going to create a new function. So in Python, the way you do that, you say def. So I'm going to call my function compute required c0. So this is we're going to create those one of those first style plots that um, the the required stress of the rock, uh, sorry, strength of the rock um, due to the input. So in this case, it's, we're going to take in the stress tensor, uh, the pore pressure, the mud pressure, or the wellbore pressure, whatever you want to call it. Nu, nu is the Poisson ratio. Mu is the internal friction from the more Coulomb. We're going to use a more Coulomb failure criteria. Um, the angles G. These are um, the angles, the three angles between the local or you know the, the coordinate system when uh, the principal stresses are in and the the uh, geographic coordinate system. Right. And angles B, which indicate the deviation of the wellbore. So we're going to, whenever in Python, whenever you, whenever you have, like, so these that don't have equal something, these are required arguments. So this function will throw an error if I don't provide the stress tensor, the pore pressure, the mud pressure, the Poisson ratio and the internal friction. It will, however, run with these default values for these arguments. I can provide them if I want, or, it, or if I don't provide them, it'll run with those default values. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is create. So what I'm when I'm saying stress here, I'm. I'm indicating that this is uh, an arbitrary stress. Okay, just a stress tensor. In terms of the principal stresses, um, and so inside the function, I'm actually going to compute the, the wellbore stress, right? So I'm saying compute SB, which is a function we've already defined, and it takes the arguments S angles. G and angles B. Right? So, so that's going to take the stress that I feed in to compute required CO. It's going to feed it right in and compute the wellbore stress tensor. And the angles that I pass into the first function are going to be passed right in. So if I don't provide them here, it'll just be 0, 0, 0, and 0, 0. So that stress is not the effective stress. It's, it's the 
total stress. And so we need the effective stress, which is SB <coughs> minus the pore pressure. That's why we needed it as an argument, times the identity matrix. Okay. Um, now, my functions for computing the maximum and minimum transitional stress take an argument theta. So this is, this is, you know, we have our well bore, and as we go around the well bore, there are different values, right? We've seen this before. There are different values for the tangential stresses, right? Sigma theta theta, sigma RR, the different values as we go around, right? Now what I want to plot here, because I'm ultimately trying to figure the, the, the maximum or required, I'm sorry, the minimum required strength of the material. The minimum required strength of the material is going to be corresponding to the maximum stress anywhere, right? So what I want to do is I want to compute the values of the stresses all the way around the well bore, right? And then I want to figure out which one of those is the maximum, because that's going to determine if I'm going to have a breakout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, a, a, you know, an array, a lens space. It's going to go from 0 to 360 in 100 steps. So I'm going to take 100 points around and I'm going to compute the stresses at all those locations, okay? So then I'm, my S max is going to be the first thing I'm going to do is say compute max, and I think this works. Uh, if I execute that, then I should get, get go away. Compute max tangent stress, all right, and it takes in SB effective new I and delta P. Well, delta P is the pore pressure minus, I'm sorry, uh, delta P is the mud pressure minus the pore pressure. Okay, and I'm going to say for i in theta. Okay, so yeah. Oh, I was wondering why that didn't. It should have. There's some autocomplete features in here, and I was wondering why it didn't work. Compute. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm calling that function compute max tangential stress with these inputs, and this, where i is, should be theta, right? So it should compute a value, a single value for theta, okay? Now I create an array of values for theta that go from 0 to 360 in steps of 100. So the, there's 100 values of theta here that go around the circle, okay? So I'm going to call this function at each of those values. So I'm going to call this function 100 times, computing the maximum principal stress at all those locations around the well bore, okay? Right? So this is going to give me, this is actually an array of 100 values. And of those 100 values, I want the maximum. All right? So I'm going to say max. And it gives you some syntax highlighting, so I knew I made a mistake uh, because there was like a red line there. Uh, I had forgotten the parentheses there, okay? So go away. All right, so that's uh, the max. And then likewise, S min.
So you know, if I hit tab, you notice how it brings up a, it's another kind of cool thing about the notebook. It, if I hit tab, it, bring, it brings up like an autocomplete menu. So now I have the maximum of the maximum values, the real maximum, right? And the minimum of the minimum, the real minimum. Values of the principal stresses at any location along the wellbore. Okay? And with that, then remember my S max and S min, these are the endpoint locations of my in my Moore circle, right? The S max, these are principal stresses. So they define in the Moore circle, right? In the, in the Moore circle, this is like sigma one, uh, three, sigma one, and in this case, this is sigma max, sigma min. Right? So with that and my more Coulomb yield criteria. This is what I wrote down earlier and is in your notes. I can compute my value of CO, where mu is the internal friction. So that's what my function returns. So I compute the required CO for all these inputs, and that's what it returns. Okay. So let's let's test the function, make sure it works, first of all. I gotta figure out does anybody have a surface and know how to make it quit doing that? Just use the keyboard. Um, so let's see if our function works. Let's see if we wrote it correctly. For that value of stress that's already defined there. We'll use a We'll use a balance case where we have a 20 MPA mud weight, 20 MPA um, pore pressure. Mu, we'll say this is the Poisson, nu rather, it's Poisson ratio. Uh, most rocks have a Poisson ratio somewhere in that region, a quarter, 0.2, something like that. I'm just putting in arbitrary numbers. Well, not, not truly arbitrary, but not pertaining to any actual rock, just something that makes sense. Um, in, internal friction angle, we'll say 0.6. Um, angles, 0, 0, 0. Well, angles, G equals. So in this case, we'll assume that our principal stresses are aligned already with the geographic coordinate system. Uh, but we'll, we will use a deviated well bore that's deviated by 20 degrees in both directions, both angles. Okay. Well, it didn't give me an error, so. So that, <coughs> so for that, so for that value, uh, 20 degrees deviation, 20 degrees delta, I have, you know, this is, this is the required strength of rock in MPA, in megapascal, all right? So we want to create that figure, right? So we need to sweep. That figure represents, in one, one view, represents sweeping delta, and phi, right? 
And so we need to sweep these angles, uh, delta from 0 to 360, right, all the way around, and phi from 0 to 90, okay, all the way up. So we need to actually do this computation sweeping those values. And we can do that with a loop. Um, so the first thing we'll do is create some linear spaces that we want to sweep through. We'll go from 0 to 360, and we'll do it in, ste in 50 steps. And phi, we're going to go from 0 to 90. And we'll do that in 50 steps. OK, so the result then will be we have to use a loop. And I use a, OK. So in preparation for plotting this thing, right, I'm going to compute x, y, and z locations in this loop. Right? So the z, the z is the value of CO. Right? I mean, that's what we're computing. Right? The x and y is the location in an x, y plane. Because when you plot, you know, the the coordinates here are defined basically in polar type coordinates. But when you plot in, in MATLAB, right, you have to plot at x and y. So I need, I want to create a contour plot eventually. I need x, y values, and I need the z, or you know, the, the, the value that you want to plot, or the color of, right? In, that, in this case, it's CO. So what I'm going to do um, is, I guess I'll, I'll write it here, right? So we have this. Remember, this angle is delta. And then we also have phi. Right? So what I want to do is I want to plot the projection of this guy back onto a plane of the ground. So I want to plot this projection back up here okay? and, and find its x and y location. So that's, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to do it all at once. Uh, so also, unfortunately, I kind of got some mixed. Um, the, default, uh, the default argument for sines and cosines are in radians. But the way I wrote those functions earlier was it does the conversion. You can st we like to put them in as degrees, right? It's easier to think about. So I, I wrote a, inside those functions, you'll see there's a conversion from radians to degrees. So now I. Since the function takes in deg degrees, I need my um, x and y locations that I'm going to solve for to also take in degrees. Um, so that is the projection where d is meant to be delta and p is meant to be phi, the projection back onto uh, the x value plane. Okay, so that's my x and y, and then I'm going to compute z, which is my function. So compute required CO, given the value S is 20, we we'll use the same values as above, a balanced pore pressure, Poisson ratio of 0.2, internal friction 0.6, my 
angles G will be 0, 0, 0. So just principal stresses align with geographic coordinates. And my angles B are what I'm sweeping, right? So this is going to be D and phi, right? For D and delta, for P and phi. And I missed a closed parenthesis somewhere. Anybody see it? What? Now there is, wait. Oh, right here is where it is. Yeah, the left bracket is right, right here. Okay, now let's see if that works. Nope. What did I do wrong? So that actually takes a while because, because right? I mean, when I when I'm doing when I'm calling compute required CO, I'm sweeping around the wellbore, 100 points, and then so there's 100 points in that computation. Then when I go through this, I'm sweeping again, 100 points times 50 times 50, right? So it actually takes a few seconds to get through that computation, but it's done now. Um, so now there's an issue, and that is whenever you plot, who's ever tried to plot a contour plot in MATLAB? The syntax in Python is almost one to one. Can now you, right? Remember, I just I sweeped. I started by sweeping theta and phi, which created this sort of array of points like this, right? not necessarily on a grid, and I projected that back up onto the plane. So it's not going to be regular. Right? It's going to be a circular array of kind of spiraling points that aren't on a regular grid. Well, if you know anything about in MATLAB, when you try to plot in 3D, or a contour plot or surface plot, it wants a regular grid of XY points. Anybody ever tried to do that? It wants a regular grid. So Knowing that I have this irregular grid, I need to interpolate that irregular grid. So the, the irregular grid is going to look like something like this. Well, for the benefit of the recording, let's do it here. Right, so the regular grid, because I sweep, I sweeped theta and phi and then projected back onto the plane. So the regular grid that I sweeped looks something like this, okay? But but the plotting program wants a wants a regular grid. It wants the data at the red dots, not the blue ones, okay? So I have to interpret I have to interpolate 
the data from the blue to the red so that I can call my plotting routine. Right? And so there's, you know, there's built-in interpolation functions we can use. Right? So uh, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to create the grid that I'm actually going to plot on. And that's going to be uh, a grid from minus 1 to 1. And we can create 100 points in the x and y direction. So then the grid that I'm going to interpolate to is this built-in mesh grid function. Okay. All right. So then what I'll do is I'm going to so one thing kind of makes Python different than MATLAB is you have to do these when you import special packages, you have to, they're not just all there all the time. You have to sort of import them, which once you use it for a while, I mean, at first it's sort of awkward that you have to do this because in, you know, in, in, in MATLAB, if you want to use interpolate, you just write interpolate, right? You don't have to do this importing. But it, once you understand why this is, there's a very good reason for it. And, and it also, you know, speeds up the, the loading time of the code and stuff because you don't need to import a lot of stuff that you don't need. So, uh, so SciPy interpolate is where I'm going to get my interpolation fr function from. Uh, Matplotlib PyPlot is where I'm going to is my plotting routines, and then this little statement is what's going to allow me to plot it in line in the notebook, as opposed to say, creating a an external figure or something. Uh, so my x values are in the first column of my result from earlier that I computed. My y values, those would be, these would be the blue dots in my figure earlier, are going to be in the second column. And so um, my interpolated result is going to be from uh, scipy interpolate. Grid data, x, y. The, res the data I want to interpolate, my, my blue dots are in the third column. The points I want to interpolate them to are grid x and grid y. These are my blue, do are my, uh, blue dots, they're the re I'm sorry, red dots, the regularly spaced ones. And I'm using a, a cubic interpolation. So with that, I should be able to create my figure now. These are just some styling commands here. I want the aspect ratio to be equal. Uh, and then here's the actual plot command. So I'm going to plot on grid X and grid Y the interpolated result. We'll, we'll just do that. All right. I hate that color map. The default color map in MATLAB too, the jet. <coughs> Worst color map ever.
So, what do you think will happen if we change in the, the angles? Uh, right now, my principal stresses are aligned with my geographic coordinate system. What do you think if I change just the S1 direction, so the sweep alpha, if you remember from that plot? What do you think will happen to this figure? I think it, it's a little hard to know unless you know the exact faulting regime or which which one you're sweeping, but but made it it might rotate. So I mean the cool thing about this is this is how long it takes to 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 check that out, right? So we just go up here, change that to say 30 degrees, let it run. It takes a few seconds to generate the data. Cool, huh? Far, I mean, if I'm your boss, I'm going to be far more impressed if you bring me something like this than your little chicken scratch hand calculations. In fact, I'm going to tell you to go away. Code it up so I trust you. So, hope you paid attention. You might have a homework assignment similar. We're done.